Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Great background blur or bokeh is one way to make your photos stand out. In this video, we're going to learn to use one of the unique tools of Affinity Photo to make this happen, and that is the depth of field blur filter. So let's get right into it. Before we begin, let's do a quick review of the concept of depth of field. Depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that appears acceptably sharp. In the case of this example image on the right, what is acceptably sharp is from the bottom of the image to the dog's eyes. One feature of depth of field which we have mentioned in other videos is the change from sharp to unsharp is not abrupt but gradual. And you can see that here in the sample photo, the farther back the object is, the more out of focus it becomes. And the transition is gradual. So knowing what depth of field is, what then is the depth of field blur filter? The depth of field blur filter applies a blur gradient that can be used to simulate extreme depth of field. It can be applied as a non-destructive live filter. One interesting feature of this depth of field filter is you can rotate the control left or right and use the shift key to lock the rotation. We're going to see an example of this later on. Now let's understand how to modify the blur gradient. With the depth of field control, there are gradient stops which determine the position and extent of the transition between the areas in sharp focus and those that are blurred. In the image on the right, you can see what the gradient stops look like. They are represented by four lines with a circle handle that you can use to adjust the size and position. The focus origin A defines the central point at which the image is kept completely in focus. Reposition the focus origin by dragging on the stop. So this focus origin, which is represented by A here, is what you use to position this control. The inner lines B define the width of the area in focus. So within these inner lines is where the image is perfectly sharp. And at the center of this is the focus origin A. The outer line C defines the end of the blur transition. The transition areas D between the inner and outer lines are where the blurring gradually increases. The wider the lines, the more gradual the transition. And you can adjust the width of this area D by dragging on the handles. The area outside the lines has the filter applied at the full amount. Anything outside the line C is where the maximum blur is applied. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the depth of field blur control, let's demonstrate how to use it. So we're going to apply the depth of field blur to this image. Let's start off by clicking the live filter icon and choose the depth of field blur filter. I'll choose the tilt shift option to get a linear gradient as opposed to a radial gradient, which is the type of blurring which is more applicable for this type of photo. Next, I'll increase the radius to maximum to make the blur really stand out. To position the depth of field filter, drag on the center handle, which is the focus origin A we talked about in the previous slide. As you can see, the center handle is also at the center of the area of maximum sharpness. The depth of field filter also includes a clarity slider to increase local contrast and a vibrant slider to enhance the colors, make the image pop a little bit more. So that's a nice touch with a depth of field blur filter. Next, I'll drag the widget such that the center handle is at the bottom as I want the maximum sharpness to be where the dog is also located. Next, I'll drag the outer handle to lengthen the transition from sharp to unsharp to make it look a little bit more natural. This is also to set the area of maximum blur a little bit higher on the image. Okay, that's looking good. Unfortunately though, the dog is unintentionally being included in the blurring. So we need to fix that. How do we fix this? So we need to fix this by masking out the dog. Let me temporarily disable the depth of field blur tool. 
Next, let's use the selection brush tool to make a rough selection of the dog. Next, let's refine the selection. I'll make sure matte is selected and brush around the edges of the dog's fur. Okay, that's looking good. Let's click apply to that. Now that the selection process is done, let's create the mask. As you can see, the mask is still not perfect, but we can still further improve this later. Right now, let's drag the mask inside the depth of field blur filter layer. Let's view the mask by using option click on a Mac or alt click on Windows. As you can see, there are still some errors. So let's use the paint brush tool to fix the errors. Finally, let's invert the mask so that the blur is applied to the background and not the subject. There, much better. So here's the before and the after, before and the after. Now there are other unique features of the depth of field tool. One thing you can do with the depth of field tool is to rotate the control for scenes at an angle, like in the case of these boats, where I want to have the second boat sharp. Having it straight would not place the blur evenly. And so it's nice that with the depth of field blur tool, you can angle it to match the angle of the boat. Also, while I prefer the tilt shift option because of its linear blurring effect, the depth of field also comes with an ellipse option to perform a radial blur. In the ellipse option, the inner ellipse is the area of maximum sharpness, while the outer ellipse contains the transition area from sharp to unsharp. Just like in the tilt shift option, Areas outside the outer ellipse are the areas of maximum blur. So there you have it. That is the depth of field blur tool, a very powerful tool indeed. But the depth of field blur tool is not the only blurring tool that can help you add beautiful bokeh in your shots. In the next video, we'll be talking about a popular iOS app called Focus, which also features the ability to add great blur on a photo. And we will be comparing focus to the depth of field blur tool to see which one is the best for bokeh editing. So watch out for that. And by the way, if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.